How can I be a better father? That's a question that a lot of guys ask, and today we're going to talk about that right here on the Manlyhood Mancast. You can be a man of courage, of honor, of integrity. You can be the father, the husband, the leader that your family and your community needs. This is the Manlyhood Mancast. Here's your host, Josh Atcher. Gentlemen, welcome to the Manlyhood Mancast. I'm your host, Josh Hatcher. And listen, we've got lots of amazing things happening here at Manlyhood. And one of those things, so we've got some great products available for you, including uh, this Manlyhood Apothecary Beard Oil, which you can get at the store at manlyhood.com. So go to manlyhood.com slash store, and you can check out the products we've got available for you. This is one that I know you're going to love. It's made with CBD oil, and it's fantastic. So I want you to check it out. Let's support Manlyhood by doing that. We've also got some contests as well. So you go to manlyhood.com slash contests. You can enter to win contests there. And uh, don't forget, we've got books and stuff available too. I'd love to be able to uh, take the things that I've learned and apply them into your life so that you can learn and grow along with us. So, uh, And also our private Facebook group, the Manlyhood Man Cave. I'd love to see you there. We get a lot of guys coming there from the podcast uh, who hear about us from the podcast and then join the group. And when you're there, you know, weigh in. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's hear your questions. Let's connect with you in a, in a really good way. It's a place where men are building each other up. And there's a lot of groups out there where you're not going to get built up, where you're actually going to get torn down, and you're going to hear a lot of nonsense. And uh, I've really been kind of the proud, been proud of the way that the Manlyhood Mancast is uh, affirming and encouraging for men. And uh, I really believe that you'll, you'll get some good stuff out of that group. So today, guys, we're going to talk about great dads, great kids, how to be a better father. So fatherhood is not for the faint of heart. I remember being young and starting out with twins on our one-year wedding anniversary, man. And I've raised four kids. The last one's on her way out the door. And... It's not for the faint of heart, and it's not easy. It's rewarding, and it's probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done. But it's hard, and it can be very difficult. And I know a lot of dads really struggle to connect with their kids. They really struggle to help them grow, to to understand where these guys are coming from. They love them, but they don't know how to connect with them. And, you know, our generation, you know, we're striving to do better than the generation before us. And in many ways, we are doing better than the generations before us, but there's still room for improvement. The first thing you need to know about being a good dad is that you need to be present and involved. So many dads get hung up on this idea that they are the provider, which you are. And they get hung up on an economy that, let's face it, really sucks. And so in order to make ends meet, they think they have to work a lot of overtime. And they're not home with their kids. And I'm going to tell you right now, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, they're not going to wish they had all the fancy toys you could have bought them. They're not going to wish they had all the extras that you could have bought them. They're going to wish they had more time with you. So... A bigger paycheck is nice, and you can work hard, and you can create a life that is better for them. But you've got to balance it, because what what are you building if you're not with them? You know, I think this is one of the biggest downfalls of our culture, is that we think that providing a better life for them financially is the answer. It's not. They need you. They need you. So, and not just being present, but being involved. When they're little, you're changing their diapers. You're helping feed them if they need help with that. they getting tucked in, and you read stories to them. And as they get older, you play with them, and you teach them. You work with them, and you help them to 
grow as a person. You're involved in that process. You don't just delegate it out to the mother or to the school system. Like you are your kid's primary teacher. You're the one that they need to learn the most from. So you've got to be involved and present. So not only do you have to be there, but you've got to be involved in their life. Actually have conversations with them. Actually play with them. Actually pay attention to them. Actually be present. Now, I understand that a lot of people have kids and it doesn't work out with their mom and they get separated. And that makes this a lot more challenging. All I can say to you is don't give up on that challenge. Keep trying. Do what you can to make sure that you can be there, present, and involved in your kid's life. It matters. It does matter. It's how you're going to have a great kid (laughs) is because their dad is involved in their life. That's what makes them better. So do that. If your dad wasn't there for you and you're insecure about whether you're doing a great job or not, just do the best you can. That's all you can do is do the best you can and get better and get healing and learn what you need to learn so that you can do that. The other thing I want to encourage you guys is have fun. Have fun. Like that's like the best part about being a dad. You make stupid dad jokes. You find excuses to celebrate. Even teenagers need to play. And even grown-up children need to play and to have fun and to laugh and to have adventures. Live a life of adventure. I know with with our kids, you know, if we had an opportunity to go on a field trip or to go on an adventure, we did. We found an excuse to do something fun. I remember... Uh, There was one day, I wish I could remember what day it was, but the date turned. Uh, So I think that it was one of those situations where the date and the time, it lined up at just the right amount of the day where it was like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It was like ridiculous. They all kind of lined up. And so it might have been 12, 13, 14 seconds after that. No, what was it? I wish I could remember, guys. Whatever it was, it was one of those weird moments where all of the numbers of the date and time lined up to count out to something crazy. And so my kids were little, and we put neckties on our heads, and we went outside in the yard, and we counted down to that exact second, and then we just twirled around in circles until we fell down in the grass and laughed because we just made it a holiday that didn't exist. (laughs) You know, we would take... uh, a weekend opportunity, you know, on a Saturday or a Sunday after church and we'd pack up and we'd go out to the lake and go swimming. Or we would go for a hike and we'd look for things that we could teach them on our hike. Or we would go to the store, go to the dollar store and give them each a buck and have them give get something interesting for somebody else in the family. And just tricks and things like that. Get involved in cooking a meal together. Get involved in just doing something fun. Have a game night. Watch a crazy, funny movie. Do something together. And at any age, including grown kids, you can do this. Have some fun. Make some memories. Because that's the stuff that's going to matter. My kids always remember all the crazy field trips that we went to, to the glass museum, to the zoo, to everywhere. Everywhere that we could go and find something fun to do. And there's a lot of free stuff to do right in your town. So take some time and research it. Spend some time. Have a good time with your kids. Now, you also need to be strict. And I know this isn't popular today because we want to make our kids our friends. And there is a little bit of friendship that happens with our kids. But they also need to see that you've got a set of values and a set of rules that your family lives by. And it's okay for you to be strict. It's okay for you to say, This is what we do in this family. We don't do that. We do this. In fact, it's a good thing for them. Because that's the way society and the world works. There's codes and there's orders and there's rules. If you don't teach your kids to respect rules, they won't. And then they will get in trouble. So you want to have great kids? You need to be strict with them. You need to say, if you do X, this is the punishment for doing X. If you do Y, this is the reward for doing Y, because that's also part of it. But in doing that, you will teach your kids to be well-behaved. They can respect you and love you at the same time. And you need to have those clear 
rules and clear disciplines, and then you need to stay consistent with them. And I will say this as well. Sometimes rules bend. I get that. Sometimes the thing that you have established that you wanted to be super strict about, you end up bending on later. It's fine. You're going to be much stricter with your first ones than you are your last one, most likely. I get it. But in general, it's okay to be strict. It's okay to say this is the time we go to bed in our family. It's okay to say you don't get out of bed unless you're having an emergency like throwing up or something. It's okay to say, you know, we're not dating until we're a certain age. You can make those rules and you can enforce those rules. In fact, you need to because children need that order and that discipline in their life. If you want to be a great dad, you also need to be loving. Be loving. Your kids need to see you hug and kiss them and to hug and kiss your their mother and to see you hug uh, and love and tell them how great they are and how much you love them. They need affection. Don't withhold it. Don't withhold it. Don't make sure that when you die someday, your kids know and have no doubt about whether or not they were loved by their father. This matters a lot. Make sure that you love them. I love you should be the most said word in your home. And it should echo in their ears at every moment. I love you. I'm proud of you. They need that. Desperately. Desperately. You should also try to speak more praise than criticism. Um, while you're being strict, which you do need to do, while you're setting order, which you do need to do, criticism can be overcorrection. Criticism can be da damaging. And detrimental, yes, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to say, this is wrong, I need to correct it. But don't, don't withhold the praise that they need from you too. They need more praise than criticism. And you, if you find yourself slipping out of balance, find something to praise them for. Even when you're offering correction in that moment, when you're offering correction about the thing that's going wrong, Make sure that you point out something right. Because what happens is if you over-criticize, they will become either too self-critical to a detrimental level, or they will become numb to any correction. And I know, guys, I struggled with this. I was probably overly critical of my kids. I expected a lot of them, and I was pretty strict. And I don't think I told them how great they were enough. And I think that sometimes that causes them to struggle. So I want you to make sure that you praise more than you criticize. I'm taking this to heart myself, guys. This is for me as well. Even though my kids are pretty much grown, I'm trying to learn to point out the good stuff more. And so that's my advice to you guys. That's what I think, that's how a good dad will make great kids, is if he he takes the time to do these things, to speak more praised and criticism to be loving and not withhold affection from his kids to be strict and have guidelines and rules that he enforces and follow, makes them follow and they has fun all kinds of fun and then most importantly is he's present and involved in his kid's life that's what makes a great father and guys when you look at the world around you and you see how everything is basically just a madhouse our cultural values have just completely collapsed. And we can look at the world and we can be despair, be in despair by what's happening and by where it's going or where it's headed. Or we can recognize that your most effective avenue for changing the world and making it better is by raising good kids, raising great kids. That's up to you, Dad. That's up to you. Nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else can do it. Don't leave it up to the school system to raise your kids. How's that going right now, by the way? How's that going? It's a problem. Because we have people who don't share your values trying to teach your kids in their values and their ways. Don't leave it up to the Sunday school teacher, even. Don't leave it up to anybody 
Raising your kids is your job. So do it right and do it well. Because if we ever want to see our culture get better, it's going to start with the next generation. This is planting seeds so that someday we can reap a harvest. Your children are fertile ground. Plant good seeds. Guys, that's what I have for you on the podcast today. I just want you to know that I really appreciate you, and I appreciate that you take the time to listen, and I'm going to ask you a favor. Coming up in May, it's our 10th anniversary. I want to see Manlyhood double the impact that we have before our 10th anniversary. I really want to see us grow. So right now, you are one person listening to this podcast. I want you to find, I want you to think of right now three people that you know that would appreciate the message that you've heard today. Three people that that would appreciate this. And I want you to send them this podcast and ask them to listen. And I figure the, the way that could work is out of those three people, one of them is going to listen. So now we've doubled our impact. But that works when you help us. That works when you help spread the word. So the other things you can do to help us spread the word is to tell all of the algorithms that we're doing something good. So if you see one of our social posts, like the post, comment on the post, share the post. If you see one of our videos on YouTube or wherever, do the same thing. If you uh, leave us a, a rating or a review wherever you listen to the podcast, that also will help the algorithm see what we're doing. But let's make the most important thing you do to share this with three men that you know would appreciate it because that's going to help us reach more men with this message that it's good to be a man and that we can be even better men. That's what I've got for you today, guys. I love you. I care about you. And I'll see you next time. If you want to be a better man, check out our website, manlyhood.com, for blogs, videos, and more from our Manlyhood team. Men, you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for Manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.